like to add my thanks to the governors, to the Behind the Badge Foundation and its members, as well as to the Medal of Honor Committee who have done their work today and made it possible for us to once again honor all who are listed on the wall and also those who are being honored today with the Law Enforcement Medal of Honor. It has uh, been said that every time a police officer wears his or her uniform, a silent yet immeasurable investment is made in America. Today, we see all around us a wide range of uniforms worn by law enforcement officers from many different departments from Washington and Canada. And we recognize in their uniforms the investment they are making to keep our communities safe day in and day out. People of our state and around the country recognize police uniforms as both a symbol of authority and of security and safety. For those who wear them, uniforms also symbolize their pride in service, their sense of duty and of unity. The women and men in uniform today also illustrate the changing face of law enforcement over the course of our history. Today, men and women, people of color, all of us proudly serve together in law enforcement agencies across the country. The different uniforms are also a reminder of how truly amazing it is and how fortunate we are to have so many men and women and from every corner of the state who selflessly dedicate their own lives to preserving and protecting the quality of life for all of us. Another old saying is that some people are meant to be cops. The rest were meant to call the cops. It rings so true when you consider that since the dawn of America, there have always been an exceptional few among us who were meant to be cops and who have stepped forward in that duty. It was nearly 400 years ago when the first citizens of America officially answered the call to serve in law enforcement, when in 1631 the city of Boston established the first system of law enforcement in the 13 colonies. Called the Night Watch, this first department was made up of an officer and six men who served part-time without pay. Over the what, next 160 years, the Night Watch slowly evolved to include monthly pay for the men and the first official police equipment. But at first, that equipment was very simple. The Night Watch carried a six-foot pole painted blue and white. It had a hook on one end and a rounded bill on the other. The hook was a weapon, or the bill was a weapon, and the hook was meant to grab fleeing suspects. I'm guessing they weren't moving too fast as they stumbled out of the taverns of Boston. It also contained a loud, rattling, noise-making device, which was used to call for backup. Most of all, it also contained a badge of office. Think about how these earliest symbols persist to this day. The colors, blue and white, the noise-making device, which we would recognize today as a siren, and most of all, that badge of office, that shield which symbolizes the way in which law enforcement officers protect us. We are the ones who are shielded by that badge. Today, all of the different police uniforms, badges, and vehicles serve to distinguish individual agencies and jurisdictions. At this ceremony, they are also a solemn reminder that whether you're the lone officer in the smallest precinct in Washington in the night, a trooper among thousands on patrol for the state patrol, a federal officer stationed here in our state, a tribal officer, a corrections officer, or among our border safety partners from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, wherever you serve, when one of your own is lost in the line of duty, the grief and loss are shared equally among the members of every law enforcement agency in our state and by the people of our state who are equally saddened by that loss. The risks and dangers of this profession have known no jurisdictional boundaries. It was in 1792 on May 17th that the first recorded law enforcement officer to be killed in the line of duty lost his life, Deputy Sheriff Isaac Smith. Since then, more than 2,300 deputy sheriffs have given their lives. 
It was in 1794 that the first United States Marshal was killed in the line of duty. In 1870, when Officer William Johnson of Jacksonville, Florida became the first African American police officer to be killed in the line of duty. And just seven months after that, when Thomas J. Smith of Abilene, Kansas became the first of more than 480 police chiefs to die in the line of duty. In 1916, the first female officer was killed in the line of duty. And in August 1920, Constable Ernest Usher became the first RCMP officer to be killed in the line of duty. In 1929, eight correctional officers were killed at the Colorado State Penitentiary. In 1974, the first of our country's 41 African-American female officers who has lost their lives was killed in the line of duty. And in the past two decades alone, at least 17 Native American police officers have also lost their lives. Sadly, the great diversity that we celebrate today in the ranks of law enforcement is also reflected in the losses that we've experienced. To date, the National Law Enforcement Memorial in Washington, D.C. includes the names of more than 15,000 officers from police agencies in every corner of America. Our own state memorial wall now honors 279 officers from nearly 100 agencies. Today, we will add the names of three more, as well as honor four officers who are with us today with their families with the Law Enforcement Medal of Honor. For the first time in our state's history, both of the honorees who were feloniously killed in the line of duty were female officers. And all of these officers, all that we're honoring here today, came from different agencies, wore different uniforms, but were members of one law enforcement family. At times as, such as these, one often struggles with the meaning of loss. When you lose a family member, a member, you struggle with the meaning of that terrible loss. And the only conclusion I've been able to reach from losing family members is that those losses remind us not to take for granted, not for one day, the time we have with those who are still with us. And when we lose a law enforcement officer, it should remind all of us in this state, all of us in our local communities, not to take for granted for one day the service that these women and men render to us each and every day as they serve in their law enforcement agency. All of us in Washington owe a tremendous debt of gratitude to these officers and to their families. There is no doubt that every time these officers have worn their uniform, they have made a silent yet immeasurable investment in our communities and in our state. In gathering each year for this Medal of Honor ceremony and for this law enforcement memorial ceremony, we keep America's greatest promise to law enforcement that these women and men will not be forgotten. Thank you very much.